Hello fellow RPG makers, my name is Toby and I'm going to show you how to do a quick Zelda style block puzzle in your RPG Maker game. I'm using RPG Maker VX Ace, uh, but I guess the principles would work in older versions of the program. You'd have to check that yourself. So I'm just going to give you a quick overview of um, what I'm going to be showing you today. So I borrowed some sound effects and music from A Link to the Past just to make it a little bit more authentic to that. Um, so what we're doing is we're pushing this block onto the switch which makes this chest appear. You get a key and then you can open the door. So that's what I'm going to be showing you how to do in this tutorial. Uh, so what you're going to need is a room with a door, a switch, a block and uh, what we've got here is a little reset switch but you don't actually need that, that's um, something we'll talk about in a bit. Uh, so what I did is I used a red block, this is one I made myself in Photoshop um, but you can use um, something similar, any, any sort of red block or whatever. The reason it's red is because it correlates to the red switch. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to create a block, I've called it red block, uh, got the image there, it's same as characters and action button um, and so when you press the action button on the block it's going to move the event, so you go set move route, this event, play the push sound effect and move away from the player. Also make sure you've got skip if cannot move because if you push it against the wall and that's not ticked then the game will freeze. Alright, so that's how we push the block around. So now we want to see how we get um, it to the game to register when the block is on top of the switch. Uh, the way we do that is by using coordinates and variables. Uh, it sounds complicated, but it's really not. Variables are very useful when you know how to use them. So over here, we've got a little event. This is on parallel process. I've called this red block coordinates. Um, this is tracking where the red block is at all times, which is why it's a parallel process. Um, uh, we don't actually need that, get rid of that. Right, so uh, basically parallel process, control variables, and then you have red block x for the x coordinate, um, and then have that set to the game data of the uh, event that is the actual red block that you're pushing and have that as map X. So you can you can click the drop down box red block map X. Uh, so that means that the variable red block X is equal to the position on the X axis of the red block event. And you do that for the same for Y axis as well so create a new variable red block Y is equal to the red blocks Y uh, access or map Y. Uh, so make sure you've got that in parallel process. And you do the same thing for the switch, uh, only this time I've uh, done it in the actual event of the switch itself. Uh, so we've got it named as red switch so we can um, we can reference it. It's important to name your events because you do want to be able to reference uh, quite easily. Again, so red switch x variable is equal to the red switch map x or the x axis, um, and the same for uh, the y. So red switch y variable is equal to the y axis of the red switch. Then you do a conditional branch, which basically says if the red block uh, x axis is equal to the red switch x axis, and the same for y, so that will, that will check whether the two variables match up. Um, which they will when you push the block on top of the switch then that controls uh, the switch, self switch A is on which makes the switch go down uh, and then over here we have our treasure chest that's going to appear, our treasure chest um, again called this chest parallel process this time so this is a blank event to begin with on page one and uh, that's going to be constantly checking if the red block x variable is equal to the red switch x variable uh, and the same for the y variable of the block if that is equal to the y variable of the switch then it will play the sound effect 
and a self switch is on which makes the chest appear um, so you've got the chest graphic self switch A is on, action button this is basically a normal chest other than that um, change the item to a key you found a key, a little bit of text, a little bit of fanfare um, obviously self switch B is on once you've got the key so you can't keep opening it again and again and again and then once you've got that you want to open your door so just right click create a transfer or a door um, and then on the first event page you want to have a conditional branch so that when you come up and you press the action button it will see whether you've got the key or not if you haven't it will just say it's locked and if you have then the door will act as normal you'll use the key take the key from your inventory open it go through transfer to wherever you want to go to uh, self switch A is on um, this is important because uh, if you don't do this you'll keep having to use a key every time you open the door so when the self switch A is on uh, the new event or new page of the event self switch A is on then it's basically just a normal door from that point on and you every time you go to that you won't need to use a key um, so that's quite important so now that's how the whole event the whole puzzle works um, basically we've got a little foul safe switch here in normal Zelda games if you do something wrong then you can just exit the room and come back and everything will be back as it was um, but uh, we can do that by doing something else I'll show you that in a minute but the way I've done it here is um, to save the player time you can just press the switch and then that will return the puzzle back to normal so basically if you press if you push this red block against the wall um, that means you're not going to be able to push it onto the switch because you can't get behind the red block anymore so you want to reset it so you come over here and this event um, re reset switch basically if you press the action button it will uh, change the make uh, sorry it'll make the event move um, basically this just changes the direction that the event is facing so it animates the switch um, it's not too important but it just makes it a little more um, interactive that way and then I've done set event location of the red block back to its original position here um, so you can do it as many times as you want over and over and over and it's always there um, also it saves the player time saves them having to go in and out of the room to just to reset it but you can do that um, you won't actually I don't actually think you'll need to um, have a switch if you just exit the room and come back in then the switch the event should be back where it originally was um, there is a script you can use and you put a little bit of uh, script language in the event and that will keep track of where events are and it will save their positions that's useful for other puzzles um, but you don't actually need it in this one so just for the purpose of a reset switch there it is if you want to use it use it if you don't it's not necessary um, so let's run through this one more time um, won't save any changes so um, I'll actually show you how the reset switch works if I push against the wall can't push it uh, anymore just get it stuck in the corner there so that's a load of rubbish so if we go up and we press the action button on here then the switch moves back doesn't really matter where you push it, it will always go back to that position. So here we're pushing it, it's tracking the X and Y coordinates of the box and it's uh, the switch is checking to see if the um, box's coordinates match up with it. And when we do that it does match which triggers the chest over here. We get our key and then we can use our key. Simple as that. Um, here's, here's a quick um, this is a quick sneak preview of my next video um, but when you push these about if you do something wrong then you can go back and then go back through and then they will reset so that's basically what's going to happen if you just leave the room and re-enter so uh, I hope you found this tutorial useful um, please give it a thumbs up and like and I'll see you on the next one